Hi everyone, and welcome to Jane Talks Real. It's Slayer Sunday, where I will be talking about and reviewing all the episodes of Buffy the Vampire Slayer in order. Today I'm looking at Season 2, Episode 9 and 10, What's My Line? The episode begins at the school's career fair, and Willow is super excited about it. Xander is complaining that multiple choice tests aren't going to tell them what career they should have, so I got curious and took a career test myself. I got costume designer, not bad. Willow is enjoying herself, but Buffy is struggling because no matter what the test says, she already has a career. She's only taking the test because Snyder is forcing her, and she snaps at Willow when she asks if she's curious what her career would be. Spike, meanwhile, is pissed that his vampire lackey can't translate the book that was stolen in Lie to Me. He snaps at Drusilla because she's bothering him while he's trying to find her cure, and she gets upset. He kisses her better and yells at the vamp to work faster, but Drusilla says he'll need the key. And geez, did we fast forward to season 5 already? Spike promises to send his lackeys out to get it at once, and into the credits we go. Buffy is on patrol when she interrupts Dalton, Spike's vampire, raiding a tomb, but he bought backup, who Buffy swiftly stakes. When she gets home, climbing through the window, she finds Angel in her bedroom, who seems out of sorts. She tells him he doesn't have to whisper because Joyce is away, but then he points out that she just climbed through the window. <laughs> Buffy snaps at Angel and then apologises, explaining that Careers Week is getting to her because she has no future. She tells him that he's the one thing in her life that makes sense, but what the hell is that face behind them? No wonder Buffy is prone to nightmares. Angel picks up a photo of Ickle Buffy wearing skates, and when she says it used to be an escape, he offers to take her the following night. The next day, the test results are in, and Cordelia gets personal shopper or motivational speaker, and laughs at Xander's result of prison guard. Buffy and Willow find it funny too, but hey, it's important work. And besides, Buffy won't be too far away because she's been assigned police officer. Willow wants to know what her career will be, but Xander says her name wasn't on the list at all. Buffy meets Giles in the library, who reacts strangely when she tells him about the robbing vampires. He tells her off for not knowing what Dalton stole, and she tells him to shove it because there's no replacement for her. The key turns out to be a gold cross, which Drusilla likes, but you might not want to touch that. Dalton asks what they're going to do with the Slayer, and Spike first kicks some boxes, and then decides to bring in three bounty hunters called the Order of Taraka. Isn't that overkill? No. I think it's just enough kill. Willow is trying to find Buffy, but is led away by some men in suits, and seriously, Will, I wouldn't go with weirdo guys that I don't know. She's taken to a curtained-off area with classical music and butlers and told she's to attend a special meeting because she's so academically gifted that there's only one other person in the school like her. Yay! It's Oz and he's finally here properly! Buffy is mad and Giles has to race to catch up with her. He tells her that she could have any career if she wanted to, but then screws it up by suggesting law enforcement. They get to the tomb to see what's missing and Giles spots the name Dulac. Wasn't that the city in Shrek? Giles puts the pieces together and tells Buffy that the stolen book, combined with whatever was stolen from the tomb, is bad news for them all. A bus pulls up with a Scarface dude on it, but I'm sure he's an upstanding citizen, while this dude, Norman Fister, rocks up to Buffy's next door neighbour's house, offering her free samples of beauty products, so she lets him in. No sooner as she closed the door, she screams bloody murder, but I'm sure she's fine! Finally, a plane comes into land with a young woman as a stowaway, so I guess we have our three bounty hunters. In the library, Giles orders a night of research, but Buffy has a date to keep with Angel, so Willow makes an excuse for her to get out of there. We get a nice sequence of Buffy ice skating. which Sarah Michelle Gellar performs herself, but uh-oh, Scarface dude is here. Octaris grabs her off the ice, but Angel dives into the rescue, getting into a fist fight with him until Buffy slices his throat with her ice skate. Nice. Angel notices the dead guy's ring and warns Buffy of the danger. And for real, this guy couldn't hold his breath or something? It's super distracting. Angel tells Buffy to get home immediately, but she's too worried about the cut on his head. She kisses Angel with his vamp face still switched on, which answers yes to Darla's question of would she be able to do it, and the girl from the plane is not impressed. Buffy shows the ring to Giles, who is super serious about the deadly assassin situation, 
and even snaps at Xander, who is cracking stupid jokes. Yeah, shut up, Xander. Giles echoes Angel's warning and tells Buffy she needs to hide because these people will stop at nothing to get the job done. And it won't just be three of them. Once one dies, they are replaced by another until the target is finally eliminated. So yeah, have tons of fun with that. During Giles' explanation, we get a look at Buffy's unfortunate neighbour, Mrs. Kalish, who has met an untimely demise. Ew, what are all those bugs doing? Ugh, kill it with fire! Buffy is really jumpy, not knowing who to trust as she walks the halls and grabs poor Oz who was just passing by. It's okay Buffy, Oz is cool! That night, not sure where to go, Buffy breaks into Angel's place and puts her damn boots on the bed. Really, girl? Were you born in a barn? Angel, meanwhile, goes to Willie's bar to ask him for information, but he doesn't want to play ball, so Angel shoves his head into the bar. Trouble is, Plain Girl attacks him and they get into a fight. She manages to lock him in a cage and explains in a weird Irish Jamaican accent that he's only got a few hours till sunrise. The sun will be coming in a few hours. Yeah, you can tell that accent was a last minute choice because Bianca Lawson has not had enough time to make it sound convincing. Dalton is finally done translating and uh oh, it can't be good that the key to Drusilla's cure is depicted as an angel. Cordelia drives Xander to Buffy's house to check on her which begs the question how did he get there all the other times but she doesn't answer. They let themselves in and Xander goes upstairs while Cordelia lets Norman in when he offers her free samples. Angel tries to force his way out of his prison while Buffy is attacked by Questionable Accent Girl. These two lovely stunt doubles get into a fight before the stranger introduces herself as Kendra. The Vampire Slayer. Buffy is like, bitch please, I'm the Slayer. But Kendra is insistent, so Buffy calls a truce. She takes her to Giles who confirms that Kendra is who she says she is. But she doesn't understand why people know Buffy's true identity. Giles realises suddenly that Kendra must have been activated due to Buffy's temporary death in the season 1 finale. She died? Just a little. She Buffy wants Kendra to go home but she says bad things are coming and questions why Buffy was kissing a vampire. They try to explain the situation but Kendra says Angelus can't be trusted and lets slip what she did to him. Angel is about to be fried extra crispy when Willie drags him out of the sunlight and dumps him into the sewer, gifting him to Spike. Meanwhile, Norman is bored by Cordelia's makeup questions and she's creeped out by the bug crawling up his sleeve. Xander comes downstairs in time for Norman to burst into bugs. Ew! They try to run, but Norman blocks their path. And I'm sorry, but no matter what else I see actor Kelly Connell in, he's always going to creep me out because of this. They hide in the basement and use masking tape to keep him out. Buffy busts into Willie's place to save Angel, but he's already been taken to Drusilla for the ritual that will take place that night. But first, she wants to play with him. It's agreed that Kendra will stay and help Buffy for the time being, and Buffy discovers there's actually a Slayer handbook, but Giles thought it was pointless giving it to her, and she's annoyed by how well he and Kendra are getting along. Willow says not to worry, Kendra won't replace her, but she wonders if it would be a good thing to let Kendra take over as it would give her a shot at a normal life. Cordelia and Xander, still stuck in the basement, get into a big argument which ends with them making out. We so need to get out of here. Uh -huh. They try their luck coming out of the basement, but maggots drop from the ceiling covering Cordelia and Xander has to assault her with a hosepipe. Buffy is going to check out the law enforcement idea, but first Willow tells her about Oz. They have a quick chat, but this policewoman pulls a gun on Buffy because, oh yeah, Kendra wasn't the third assassin. She opens fire into the hall and Oz takes a bullet protecting Willow. Kendra comes to help but Patrice here uses Jonathan as a shield and runs off with Kendra chasing after her. Buffy checks on Oz who is pretty chill about being shot and Kendra announces the assassin got away. Xander and Cordy meet them in the library although Cordelia doesn't stick around and they scramble to locate where the ritual is taking place now they know Angel is a component. Nobody messes with my boyfriend. Except they do because Drusilla is having a great time torturing him. Buffy and Kendra have a chat and realise their lives are very different because Kendra was given up by her family at a young age and didn't go to school or have friends but it's really hard to take this accent seriously. Please, I don't feel sorry for myself. Why should you? She's also not allowed to talk to boys which is why she's so jumpy around Xander. It's time to go to church but Angel antagonises Spike to the point of almost getting himself staked but Drusilla stops him. 
Buffy goes back to the bar to beat up Willy for answers and he says he can take her to where the ritual is being held. But Kendra is still in the mindset that Angel is not worth saving because he's a vampire. So Buffy goes without her. Willy takes Buffy to the church and right into the path of both the Order of Taraka and Spike's vampires. Spike starts the ritual and stabs Drusilla and Angel's hands together, which looks hella painful. But Spike is fuming that Willy brought Buffy here at the worst possible time and orders Patrice to kill her. But Kendra flips into action. She attacks Spike while Buffy faces Patrice and Giles crossbows a vamp to dust. Willow jumps on another vampire's back and Xander taunts Norman who slips under the door and onto some glue Cordelia has laid out and the two of them stamp him to death. Not able to get the upper hand, Buffy and Kendra switch opponents which is fine by Spike but we get terrible stunt Spike hair again before he's flung into a wall and goes to kill Willy but Drusilla calls for help because Buffy is trying to separate her from Angel. And hey look, Willow dusted her first vampire. Kendra's fight with Patrice rips her top and she is mad. That's me favorite shirt! That's me only shirt! Spike sets fire to the church and has to take Drusilla before the ritual is complete but Buffy won't let them get away that easily and the pair get crushed under a pipe organ. She comforts Angel, which Kendra is still not cool with, but helps to get him out anyway. In school, Oz has his arm in a sling, but he's no worse for wear and he and Willow bond over a box of animal crackers because these two are just adorable. I mock you with my monkey pants. <laughs> Cordelia tries to avoid Xander, but then they get into an argument and make out again, so that's something to not look forward to in the episodes to come. Buffy gifts Kendra with a new shirt and gets her ready to go to the airport. But I've gone long enough without mentioning Kendra's really fucking weird necklace. What is that supposed to be? A tray of silver peas? They have a nice little moment with their shared destiny before Kendra goes on her way. For now. And Buffy's pants kind of blend in with the grass. Back at the church, the ritual was enough as Drusilla pulls Spike out of the rubble with one hand and carries him away. This was supposed to be the end of Spike, but he was too damn popular to kill. Okay, so this is the first major ramp up of the main story since the season opener, and we get Kendra, the result of Buffy's death, and Drusilla back to being a dangerous player. I really, really wish they hadn't forced an accent on Bianca Lawson on the 11th hour, because it's so bad that it's actually really distracting. As someone who's had to learn different accents for shows, let me tell you, you need weeks of prep time to nail it seamlessly, and it's super obvious that Lawson wasn't given that time. The story on the whole was really strong, but I did find it stalled a couple of times, especially in part two, when the action kept cutting back to the library research scenes, which are important for the characters to know, but we the audience are getting the same information twice, once through action and once again through research. Because Giles made a point of saying that the order will keep coming even if you kill them, I feel the time would have been better spent having another member coming in to replace Octaris, who was killed off pretty early on. I liked the paranoia Buffy experience not knowing who the Order were, and Patrice's sudden reveal was really good, so I would have liked more of that. I'm not a fan of the argue so much you make out trope in films and TV, as it seemed a little hokey to me, but at least there have been plenty of moments between Xander and Cordelia leading up to this episode, so it didn't completely come out of nowhere. You know I love Oz, so I'm happy that we're finally getting him properly in the show, as he and Willow are adorable together. Fun fact, this is the first time the term Scooby Gang is used to describe those who help out Buffy. We have six deaths to add to the count, less than I expected for such an action-packed two-parter. We have two human deaths, Octaris, who took an ice skate to the neck, courtesy of Buffy, and Mrs. Kalish, who was given the bug treatment. Ugh. There were three vampire deaths, Tomb Raider here, killed by Buffy, this rando killed by Giles, and this dude taken out by Willow, with a little help from Giles. Finally, our one demon is Norman, stamped to death by Cordelia and Xander. That brings our running total to 10 humans, 3 transformations, 20 vampires, 1 zombie, 1 mummy, and 3 demons. So there you have it. That was What's My Line. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below or come say hi on social media. If you enjoyed this video then please hit that like button, it really does mean a lot. Or consider subscribing if you want more videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching, I'll speak to you soon and don't let the vampires bite.